The hoop house frame went up in July. The polyethylene went on in September. Now we are back at Adam Montree's hoop house in Bath, Michigan in early January to see how well those crops are doing. What crops will you put in in the next rotation? All right, so we were just doing our crop plan, so crops we'll put in next are similar to the crops that you're seeing in here right now. So we've got some scallions and some carrots down at that end that we've been harvesting off of since um, November 4th, I think was our first harvest. Um, the people that buy from us really like scallions and carrots. That's something that most people order every week. So we'll come in in another space like right here where we're going to harvest the rest of the turnips and the radishes out in the next few weeks and we'll plant some more scallions and, and carrots in. Um, we'll also plant some salad greens, some more salad greens. Um, we'll also come in with some radishes and turnips again, though in a different place, so we might switch those and they might go where the scallions were for rotation purposes. So um, a lot of the stuff that you plant late in the fall is also what you can plant early in the spring, so the February, and then come March and April, April especially, we'll start putting in the warm season crops. So we'll put in tomatoes, peppers, um, you could put in eggplant. We're not going to grow eggplant just because it's not something we really like to grow very much, and we have a little confined space, so we might do it outside. But you know, tomatoes and peppers, those will go in on April 15th, which you know is five to six weeks earlier than we would plant out in the field. And we hope to harvest those by, at the latest, July 4th. But we've harvested tomatoes as early as June 14th before on a warm year. So I think that was two years ago when it was really warm in the spring. So Where it's are you going to start them? Um, we're actually buying um, some from another grower that's about five miles north of here. So we've done some work with him where he was, it's actually the person who can heat the, his, his houses. So we've done some work where they were doing their bedding plants and they said, hey, we want to do this. So we shared some of the knowledge and information we have. And then um, since they have a heated space, uh, we don't have a heated space here and we don't have another house that we're going to put up to put a heated space in. We could do them in our basement or our kitchen with some grow lights, but we figured we have a good relationship with this grower. He has the facilities. He's going to grow something in a heated house a lot better than we're going to grow in our kitchen or our basement. So um, we're going to pay him a, a fair price. So we've told him we'd like you know, X number of tomatoes on this date. And since he's going to be putting some into his houses, he's just going to you know, plant a couple extra flats for us and be able to do it. And then we're also going to buy some outside stuff for him. So we sort of said that you know, we could try to do everything. We could try to grow our own transplants. We could try to grow all, all this. We could, you know, but if there's someone that we have a good relationship with that is has better facilities for growing transplants than us, and transplants are so important for the success of your crop, if you put in a healthy transplant, you're going to be a lot better off than you put in one that's a little leggy or hungry or anything like that. So we know he's a good grower, um, and we have just said, let's let's work together, and we'll buy some from you and and go from there. So... Does he use grow lights? He does not use grow lights, okay. no. And are, is this all organic? So is he organic and you're organic? So we aren't certified and he's not certified, although both of us are following, I guess, what you could call organic practices. Or we're keeping all the records that if we wanted to become certified organic, we could. Um, he is doing the same thing. Right now we have about 50, 40 or 50 people that are buying from us, and we haven't had one person ask us if we're certified that one. So right now our market's not saying that we should spend the money to become certified. If we expand and we maybe start selling to either a grocery store or co-op or a restaurant or those type of things where they want to be able to put USDA certified organic either on their menu, on their label, um, on their prices, that type of thing, then I think we'd reevaluate and, and possibly do that. We aren't doing anything that would compromise our ability to become certified, but, but as of now, neither of us are certified organic. Are you going to be doing an audit? An audit in terms of having someone come out and the do it? Good have agricultural practices audit that USDA is suggesting if you want to sell to institutions like schools, or, but is that a market you're looking at or not looking at? So right now, um, you know, there's some gap practices, there's some GMP practices and such that, that for our market right now, we don't need those. They're not asking us to do those. Um, I think that if we decided to go down, that would be a conversation that we would have with the purchaser or the institution before we decided to sell to them. That would be part of the conversation. Do we need to do this? Are you requiring this? Um, and have a discussion around why they would or would not require that. Explain the whoosh we're hearing. So the whoosh we're hearing is the snow from the top melting off. So usually what happens is you know it snows at night, it snows during the day, it's cold, and you get a little bit of buildup on the roof, and 
you know, as the sun comes out like it is today, thank goodness, um, all that snow starts to melt off. It slushes off and builds up on the sides, as you can see, and which is kind of nice because then it acts like a little bit of insulation on the sides, as long as it doesn't get too high up. But that's just sort of the that's the sound of sunshine, I guess, in the winter. There it goes. The, Right on time, right? That was, that was the cue and it did it. So it's just, yeah, the snow melting off the top and more sunlight getting in here, more energy getting built up in the soil and, and, uh, and more heat being built up. I envy you your peak. <laughs> the peak does make a difference. The peak does make a difference, definitely. It makes a difference. So the peak makes a difference to help that snow come off and also the two layers inflated polyethylene makes a difference. It's a little bit more rigid. You don't get sort of collapsing in, in between or bow, in between the bows like you do on a single layer. So having that tautness really helps to, to slide that snow off also. Although clearly you can grow year round with a single layer. Um, if you do a single layer and you don't need electricity out to your house, then there's another cost savings there. But you do end up with, you know, somewhere, people are saying somewhere between four and five or three and five degrees with the, the double layer versus the single layer. But again, you can clearly grow year-round in Michigan with a single layer of, of plastic. Any way to get a solar-powered fan? I think so. So we haven't done it, but I think there are some people that have, have talked about it. It's only, it's less than a 5-amp fan, so there's not a whole lot of, of energy it takes to power that. So I think that you would definitely need to have a battery backup um, where you could store some of that energy because when do we really want the double layer is when it's cold out when is it cold out usually when there's no sun so making sure that you had enough power or enough backup to be able to power it but it doesn't take a whole lot to power that fan so I think that there's a there's definitely potential for a solar powered little fan to run that talk to me about water you put in a frost free hydrant yep but um, you it's not completed yet you're still in the in process of putting it in finishing it off right so what do you do to water until the hydrant is uh, reliable All right so we did put a hydrant in both inside here and then while we had the trencher we got a couple other hydrants so we put one um, that weighs about 60 or 70 feet and then we put one or we will be growing in the field we put one down maybe I don't know 70 or 80 feet or 70 or 80 yards that way so um, we did that, and what we did, we also put electric, and what we did is did it late in the season and tried to fill in the trenches and, and get it filled in in time, and unfortunately, with other things going on, we got it about halfway fill. So right now, we used the water up until early December. Um, the line, I don't, well, I don't know the line is frozen. We knew we weren't going to be able to get it filled in because of other commitments. Um, so it's, ex it's four feet down, but it's not covered up with any dirt, so it's exposed. So what we did is turn the water off inside the house so that that line would be empty and open it so that line would be empty and we wouldn't have any freezing damage in the winter. So hopefully when we turn it on here in late February or March, depending on the weather, we'll be able to get water coming through that. So what we've done in the meantime is not watered. So um, fortunately, I guess, so unfortunately things haven't been growing because it's sunny, I mean, because it's cloudy, but fortunately that means we need to water less. So we haven't watered since about the middle of uh, November, or end of November, early December out here at all. We've still gotten some growth. We had good water buildup. We had good soil moisture going into the winter, so I think that was part of what's allowed us to carry through. Um, with it being this sunny, I was hoping to water this morning, so we do have a frostless faucet on the house and hoses enough to reach out here. So I got it all hooked up and ready to go and stood out here and turned it on, but uh, the two of the hoses were frozen because they were outside and I didn't drain them in, in December. So human error, not, not anything else. Just human error has is, is allowed us th to not have the hydrant or be able to water today, but the hoses are soaking right now um, in the bathtub and they should be thawed out. And, but we're not going to water today because we don't want to water too late because especially it's supposed to be 6 degrees tonight outside so even if it's 10 in here we don't want to go into the winter or into the night that cold with any moisture on the foliage we also are going to harvest well it's tuesday so we also harvest on tuesdays so we didn't want to water and then harvest stuff and have the chance of spreading disease so hopefully we'll get another sunny day this week or this weekend and we'll keep the hoses inside until then and be able to come out and and put some water on here and and if we get some more sunny days be able to start getting stuff growing again mm -hmm.